Good morning, and I'm singing. Sorry, you didn't need to hear any of that. You can get a song stuck in your head and you're off and running. Okay, am I in focus? Oh, good mandy. Good manding. Good morning, Amanda. <sighs> yep. All right. Welcome. Comments on... Good morning, Karen. Morning, Dill. How are you, darling? So welcome to day two of the Great International Craft Show. Um, today is a daily deal of 15% off Tim Holtz products and alcohol inks. So what that means for you guys <laughs> um, is we are we have discounted all the Tim Holtz products in the store with the exception of the uh, ink pads and refills but everything else has been discounted by 15% and will automatically be uh, calculated at the checkout. Uh, the alcohol inks are also discounted by 15% today and uh, the no judgment postage is still in full effect which means that you will be able to Place your order, pay postage on your very first order, and then all orders after that, uh, you can add select no judgment at the checkout, and then you will be able to um, continue to add and we'll post everything out on Monday or Tuesday. So what I'm going to do today is I thought I would crack out a whole heap of Tim Holtz products and have a bit of a play. So we've got a huge range of Tim Holtz in store. Um, online you will find everything from the 8x8 8x8 collage papers which I'm going to use a couple of these today we have also got lots and lots of metal embellishments and these are all 15% off as well so I'm going to use the word keys today I'm going to use some jump rings maybe one of those I've got a packet of the um, transparent wings open um, I've also pulled out some of the small talk words and and I've pre-cut some of the brand new Sizzix elements as well. So what I thought I might do is um, just kind of wing it, make a little bit... Oh, <laughs> hello, Rachel, sneakily watching at work. Um, I'm going to make a... I've just cut a piece of chipboard to be something that resembles a tag and this is what I'm going to work on as my base uh, and I wanted something a little bit more solid this will make a nice little gift tag uh, I also have some distress oxides out here and have a have a little bit of an idea on what I want to do but before I do that I just want to have a quick flick through the papers choose something that I can use for the background of my card um and see what i can come up with so this is an excellent paper set so this is the it's got 36 double-sided papers and they're actually quite big papers as well so i'm going to choose this sorry not big thick big thick papers sorry let me just i've got a bit of camera shake there we go I'm going to start with um, getting some gel medium onto, where's my paintbrush? Paintbrush is still over here from last night. Uh, I'm going to use gel medium to stick everything down so that, so I get a good adhesion. Um, and as you all know, my choice of gel medium is the Chromacryl gel medium and it is an excellent adhesive so you can use a collage medium you can use anything you like in the way of your adhesive you could cover this completely in double-sided tape but nobody has got the patience today to watch me try and peel the back off the tape uh, rather than wash my brush what I'm doing because this is a really good glue I'm using a wet baby wipe 
and I'm just going to keep that brush moist. Love that word. Um, and keep that nice and moist and so that it doesn't dry out. So in a moment, I can use it again. So I'm just gonna stick that straight onto my tag and use my scissors to cut around that tag. So the other thing today is, uh, like I mentioned in my morning video, um, Tim Holtz tools are also 15% off today. So it is the perfect opportunity for you to grab yourself an additional pair of scissors or if you like the idea of the big shears, you can grab those um, as well at 15% off. And I think I do even have a couple of uh, left-handed pairs floating around. Uh, next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna lightly sand the edges of that because it's sharp. Um, oh, sorry, sharp. Take away that freshly, freshly cut look and I'm just going to use a an emery board, a nail file, just to sand off those edges. Doing it on a 45 degree angle takes away that freshly cut look and hides a multitude of sins, more importantly. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of other papers out of here while I am thinking about it. I might grab that one. Uh, about because I'm going to lay add some layers to this as well. So I just want to see what else is in here. I'm going to be adding some stamping. Oh, I like those tickets, and I like those. Might be a bit bold. The clocks could work. The bingo cards could work. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Thank you for popping in this morning, my love. All right, I do like that the, all the lighter color papers are at the back of this pad. Oops. And the, then we've got a whole heap of images that we can cut out. So that's actually a fantastic pad. Um, all right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of inking to this now. I just wanna add a little bit to the edges. Uh, I have pulled out some oxides in some different browns here. I've got no idea which one I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna start with the light color. So I've got some frayed burlap and just using a, a blending sponge, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of love with my uh, round blending tool. Around the edges and spreading that out. And then I might also add to it a little gathered twigs, which is a slightly darker brown. I don't want to go into the middle too much and I don't want to take too much color out of it and change the color of the paper because it's already quite distressed. But that works. And I might also add a little rusty hinge or wild honey just to mix that up a little. Not that one. Definitely that one. Okay, so where I've gone in, I just want to lightly add a little color. And I'm mixing it up with my fingers as well, just because if I do a video with clean hands, it doesn't look like I've worked hard enough. Okay. What is the pad called? The pad is called, I've got no idea what the pad's called. Hey, Louise is just having a look, hang on a sec. Paper stash. Paper stash? Is that all? Yep, paper stash, 36. Papers. Paper stash, 36 collage papers or collage has it got written down the bottom no. or something? No, okay. Um, all right, so there is my 
slightly distressed tag. So what I think I might do now is I need to build on that. So what I'm going with is I have got a piece of corrugated card here. This is the Uniquely Creative cardstock. Uh, I want to add up a few little elements of corrugated card in here as well. So I'm going to go with that. Cut that about, I don't know, there. That looks good. Pop that piece aside. That piece aside. <sighs> and I want to cut out of here some of these little elements out of this pattern paper. That works. So I'm going to cut out this one as well. And I need a, might cut that one out. So I've got some ephemera here now that I can work with that will give me some layers to stick on the top. Before I do that, I want to add some more int interest to the background. So that will come with um, some stamping. Let's do some stamping. Pick up the bits I've dropped on the floor. So I'm going to use these uh, Tim Holtz Ideology Cling Foam Stamps in the lower case. And oh, I keep losing the dot on my eye. So just a tip with these, uh, keep them in the clamshell packaging that you get them in because that will certainly help them stay all together. And I tend to try and put them here in some sort of alphabetical order um, because it will absolutely mess with your head when you are trying to find trying to find certain letters. All right, so I'm thinking that I'm going to do a combination of a little bit of rusty hinge. And I also have a little aged mahogany here. And I'm going to just do some random letters. So these are cling stamps. So these will stick to your acrylic blocks beautifully. I just go straight on here and stamp straight on like that. I have a baby wipe handy that I just wipe the ink straight off of, okay? So just getting on like that. And I'm not worried about spelling out a certain word here or anything, I just want shapes in the background. And, oops, because it's all going to, whoops, sticky little things. It's all going to disappear into the background. So I'm not too phased that it's not saying a word and I don't try and spell anything out. Otherwise, um, it will end up being a bit of a, actually I might pop some down here. Something, you know, so you don't really have to try and work out what it says. I just wanted to create a, a background element. In fact, I'm gonna do that one that way and they all overlap a little bit as well. So these are great for spelling out words, uh, titles on your projects and your pages, of course, and I might need something a little darker. Let's go for Pop a little bit of ground espresso oxide in as well. So of course I love using the oxides. Oxides have just got that lovely intense creaminess to it that I love. They can, and I like to use them unoxidized, which means of course I won't add water to them to change the color. I just want to add or keep them nice and juicy like they are. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this one down here. And 
and I'll bring it up to camera in just a second just to show you what I'm doing because I don't think it's showing up very well. But these alphabet stamps are just the easiest thing to use. I currently have them in stock in uppercase and lowercase. Uh, they are the probably the most popular ones around at the moment and the ones that I use the most anyway. So I'm just going to bring those up to camera to show you what I have done. Just a little at the bottom as well. Okay. Last week, or earlier this week, we received the shipment, actually it was last week, if not longer, we received the shipment of the, the latest Sizzix dies. Um, there's a an excellent range of these still available in stock, and these are all 15% off as well. So this is the brand new release. These ones have just come out. So what I would like to do with these, I've just pre-cut some onto... Uh, craft cardstock, the um, Tim Holtz heavy, heavy er craft um, that is available, and I'm just going to add a little bit of colour to these. So I've got gathered twigs here, and I'm just going to darken up, and I'm going to use a bit of mahogany as well. Darken up some of these colours because they're going to be collaged over the top. And I'm going to stick them all down in a moment. So just because I want them to stand out on that paper a little bit more than anything. Okay. That one and that one. And this one I will do in a bit of mahogany. And I'm just dabbing it on rather than wiping it too much because I don't want to tear the die cut. Even though it's on a heavier cardstock, the, uh, because they're still quite fragile um, because they're such a beautiful, intricate pattern. So I've got four of these done. And I could have done this in a, this would have looked great in a uh, peeled paint or the new... Oh, what's the new colour called? Rustic Wilderness. That would have worked. And I might just pop a little bit more red over the top of that one, just because I really like that aged mahogany. And I'm popping those aside just to air dry before I stick them on. Right, so I'm starting to build a few different different little elements here for my project. Righty -o. I'm gonna pop those aside. Now that's gonna stick onto here. I'm thinking I might layer that one bit of that one and maybe that one something like that before I stick those on I just want to um, lightly ink the edges and I'm going to use dun, 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 ground espresso age those up a little and I'm going to distress the edges as well with my scissors before they get stuck on. So when I'm planning out a project like this, it's just all about getting the layers down uh, rather than, I don't stick everything down at once because I'm bound to change my mind. Uh, I've just changed the to black soot here on this one because it screams for a little bit of depth because it's the color that uh, the ephemera piece that will sit in the middle. Brown, black, not black. And I might also add a little bit of stenciling as well. Since I pulled my stencil out to have a bit of a play. So this is one of the Stencil Girl stencils uh, available. And this one, uh, I don't know what it's called, but the code is S... Two seven zero, 
Um, and Louise will in a moment be able to tell you what that is called because she's reading my mind. It is that one. So that one is called Picasso's Words and it's a mix up of words. What I want to do with this is I just want to add a little bit of stenciling to the background and I'm going to use uh, a little bit of heavy gesso to add some white over the top. So you could use a crackle paint, you could use a texture paste or a modeling paste. I just want to use um, what I have in front of me, which today happens to be heavy gesso, which of course is just a thick white gesso. Now I don't need to do too much because I know that it's going to get covered up. But there we go, down there. And I'll grab a little bit more here. Oh, I'm gonna just splash it up in my face. Always a lovely touch on a Friday morning. Cool, that works for me. Now, if I had a glitter duster, one of the Tim Holtz glitter dusters, uh, I do have one in my personal stash, but we don't have any in stock. I would uh, find, I'd add a little bit of the, the super fine um, glitter to the top of that, and then that will stick to the wet gesso. So if you're wanting, if you're one of those people that has to put um, glitter on everything, I was going to say no judgment here, but glitter is not my favorite thing um so i want to now add a little bit of this cardstock right to the background but i need to of course ink it first so i'm just using i'm going to use ground espresso again because that is lovely and dark and i know that i'm not going to see a whole lot of it but i'm going to ink it anyway Maybe I'll go that way. No, I won't. All right. Uh, for today's purposes, my choice of adhesive is going to be puzzle glue. Um, this is the, the magic glue that I um, bring in from Poland because it is my favorite glue to use. And I use it for mixed media projects. I use it for art journaling, scrapbooking, card making. I use it for absolutely everything. Um, by the way, if you're looking on the website, this particular cardstock, this corrugated cardstock, you will find that uh, under the heading of cardstock. I do have a whole side section called cardstock and you'll find it there. All right, so that's stuck on there. Uh, let's see what else I've got going on here. Where am I gonna pop these guys? Oh, I think I know what I'll do. I'll go there. That one will go there, that one will go there. Is that how I had it? That one. Where's that stash of cardboard that I had? Oh, here we go. So I can still see little elements in underneath here with my, there we go, I want that one to really go there, with the stamping that I did as well as the collaging uh, of, sorry, the stencilings there, the stampings is there. I've got the next bits of pieces. The plan is to pop on these guys over the top, but I want to stick these down first, okay? So I know that they're going to sit like that. Under here, this needs to have a little bit of body underneath. So I've just grabbed a piece of cardboard from a box and I'm going to use that instead of uh, foam tape for this project because I want it to have a little bit more body in that area than I would normally have. So I'm just using cardboard as my double-sided tape. That's going to stick there. 
And that's going to stick straight on there. Oh, and I forgot to distress the edges. Why didn't anyone bring that up? Gosh, people. All right, how do I distress the edges? Well, that one's stuffed down, so I can't do that. But I'm going to use the side of my Tim Holtz scissors. And I'm just going to do that. Just rush it, rub it along that edge, okay? Just to rough that up a little. I can do that still. I'll just get gluey hands a bit. Or if you don't have a pair of scissors, you can use a knife without slicing your hands open. But it just makes them all sit up a little bit higher. Does anybody else have a problem with having like 13 baby wipes going at once? <laughs> or is it just me? Okay, so there we go. That one's going to go there. I'm going to pop a little bit of corrugated card to the base of the next one. Like so. And then that one is going to go there after I distress it. So nice, firm grip on your piece of paper. And then you can do that. And ripping it and distressing it is all part of the process. So I'm just going to pop that, lots of glue on the back of that one. I'm not going to worry about lifting that one up. And I'm not going to go edge to edge because I haven't quite worked out in my head exactly what, to, what I want to do with this. If I want to stick more elements uh, underneath it or if I want to tuck something in underneath it, I can. So I do want to add those on, but I want to slide those in underneath so that they come up like that. So what I'll do, get a bit of glue on the back here. One. Oh, I like that. I might pop that one. I reckon that one needs to go in there a bit more. And I'm just going to make a puddle of glue on my desk and just swipe it through so that just the spine sticks down on that one. like so and then I'll come back and add those in in a minute okay a couple of other elements that I want to add on so let's have a look and see what I've got here I do have some of these um, fantastic wood rulers as well so I can add a little bit of color to that just with my dirty sponge so I've got I oh, picked up the black soot sponge I picked up the sponge with rusty hinge on it and I can also pick up the sponge with a little bit of that uh, what's it called aged mahogany on it as well uh, I can also grab a little water and now just kind of activate that and it kind of changes the color of where the distress inks were okay and I want that to go on there but I don't want the whole thing so I'm just going to snap it off and that works. So the colours that I've mixed up on there also match in with the colours that are in here and in here. So we're starting to add a collection of, of layers in the back. I want to wrap some string around it. So I've got some string handy. Uh, I also have here the jump rings I'll add on in a moment. Let's crack out one of these word keys. And where do I want to put that? Which one am I going to use? So if I had, um, there's a couple of things I can do. If I had a, a distress crayon handy, I could use that. But I'm going to grab a, a very tiny amount of gesso, just a little on my finger. And I want to highlight... I want to get it down in because this key has the word memory written on it. 
Um, I don't know if you can see that. There it is. So I'm going to put that onto there and push that gesso down into those gaps. I'm going to put a little bit more on my finger. Okay, dirty baby wipe. And you see what's happened? It's stuck in the gaps. Just like that. Love that. Okay. So I want to use that. I might tie it to my ruler and make that a feature point. So let's get rid of those for a second. Pop those off to the side. I also love this clip, these clips, these little hinge clips, but I haven't worked out where I'm going to use those yet. Uh, I want to use a dead person. Okay, so the Tim Holtz Dead People, love the heck out of these guys. You know I use them almost every time I do live Facebooks. Um, bit of a tip with them though, if you have someone with an arm out, their arm needs to be leaning on something. So for example, if I'm going to put my, uh, if I'm going to use this one, his arm needs to be leaning on, you know, a key standing up or something like that. Uh, this one, for example, he's got his elbow up. So his elbow needs to be resting on something. Uh, I've got, where's the bag of them that I had handy? They're actually called um, paper dolls. Online. They're actually called paper dolls. Sorry, if you are looking for them online, they are called paper dolls, not dead people. That is just my fond name for them. And it's a quite a respectful name. I think that they are... And I was saying to Louise earlier, who thinks I'm a little strange about it, but I love that they are real people. They all have a, have a history. They all have a memory. They have something that makes them a real person. Um, and I, I love that they all have a story. I might pop him on there. I like that one. So you can see with this guy, if I was to use him, he needs to be sitting he could be sitting on that ruler just fine, although he's a little large. Uh, this guy here, that would also work. That's a good one. Um, kid with the hat would also work. But I, I'm just going to go with this guy since he's there. And I'm going to pop some foam tape on the back of him, ready to go for when I decide to stick him down. If I put foam tape on it, can't change my mind. I've got to commit to it. That's the plan anyway. All right, let's go back to what I'm doing here. So I want to take this bit of string that I just pre-cut, just a piece of brown string. And I want to tie that to here. Do I want to go that way? I think I need to go that way. So I'm just going to wrap my string nice and tight around my ruler. And the, what, the, the wood rulers are fabulous because they will color. You can ink them, you can stamp on them. There's, they just fit in with almost any project. You can cut them in half, you can, tie, you can um, just break them in half like I did. Uh, they work really great. go there. Is that a dog snoring I can hear? Yeah, it, is. it is a dog snoring. Oh, always good. Thanks, Macy. Um, now, how do I stick that down? Because it's quite a heavy element. I could use the gel medium that I had before, but I'm just going to use my magic glue or I could foam tape it, but I'm going to generously Commit to that. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, let's whack that on there. So I've got my key. I've made the word memory a little bit stronger. I could, and I still will uh, off camera, I'll put a little bit of gel medium underneath that key just to secure it. 
So this guy here, he needs to be standing on something. So that is where this will sit. So he is going to be anchored to something. I'm just gonna ink his edges first. I could color him with alcohol inks, which are also 15% off today, but I wasn't prepared to do that at the moment. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to here, a bit of red to his jacket, just with the oxide, a bit of sponge. Yeah, that'll work. And before I stick him down, maybe he needs some wings. Does he need wings? Let's have a look. Here's my little Ziploc bag of wings. Uh, so these are also 15% off today and online and you will um, have product, so much product, to, well, that's a lot, so much product to choose from. So we've got a, a great range of Tim Holtz products in stock. You know what? No, it doesn't need the wings. Don't overdo it. Let's just rip that baby off. Okay, so where we are at at the moment is we have stuck the paper down to our background. I've just popped him there and you see how now he's standing on that ruler. My glue will dry, don't worry about that. He's too manly for wings. Thanks, Karen. Um, you're probably right. In fact, I know you're right. Okay, so just in finishing this off, uh, I've got these that I still wanna add on. So I do need to, I don't wanna add that one on because it doesn't fit in there now, but I'm gonna pop that one. And did anybody else notice that I inked the wrong side of that? Last. So I'm just gonna quickly, dirty, I'm not re-inking, I'm just using what's on my sponge block. Just going to push the bits out. And at the end of this video, for those of you who have just tuned in, I'll just go back over very quickly and talk to you about the steps that I have used to create this project and talk you through it. But you will be able to go back and watch it at your own leisure and even create your own project just by following my steps. Okay, so now that has been uh, inked, I'm just going to put the glue on the back and layer this one over the top. And I don't glue edge to edge, it's unnecessary. I'm not going to be putting this anywhere except for on display on my shelf. Oh my goodness, and now I've got glue everywhere, but it dries. There we go. Uh, what else did I pull out to use? Jump rings. Okay, has anybody here used jump rings before on their projects? I love using them. I've used them for years on my projects and I think they make great little embellishments. Um, I don't know what they're used for in the real world, but... I like them for adding embellishments. Um, and I've also got here some small talk snarky. So maybe this guy needs a witty, a witty word here. How about we go with, I need something I can cut up because I want to put it in this little gap here. Is your drama going to have an intermission soon? I smell old people. Oh wait, that's you, happy birthday. Uh, I just rescued some wine, it was trapped in a bottle. No, that was last night. Um, sorry for the mean, hurtful, accurate things I said to you. Let's use that one, because that's a bit funny. Before I stick it down, I'm gonna edge it and then I'll pop these jump, jump rings on. This um, has to go on first before the jump rings so that I have them in for position. <laughs> so I'm a bit lazy when I do this. I will stick, cut, Voila. Alrighty, so jump rings. Jump rings are excellent. 
in the real world, let's see what they're for. It says on the back here, a flexible metal ring that can be opened and closed by hand that is used for connecting objects. Good to know. Never used them for that purpose. <laughs> <laughs> what I do use them for is embellishments on my page. So I use dimensional magic. You could also use glossy uh, accents or some other thin, thin uh, adhesive. This adds dimension, this adds dimension, but I've just put a little puddle here on my desk and what it's going to do is dry lovely and clean. It's an excellent adhesive. Uh, adhesive. You know, a lot of you, I know a lot of you use, um, whoops, glossy accents for sticking things down. I use Dimensional Magic and I just dip it in there and use them as, and drop them onto my project with my tweezers and a couple of different colors. Let's mix it up a little bit. You don't need very much glue on it. It's gonna hold pretty well. And they become these interesting little things that sit around your project gonna stick this down a bit. How am I going for time? Oh yeah, nothing. Got nothing else to do today. I'm gonna waffle on here all day. Stay. All right, but they just become these gorgeous little embellishments around your page. These little half circles, or so little circles, little shiny elements. All right. So while I'm doing this, um, I'll give you a bit more information about what's happening on the website. So for today only, you can get 15% off Tim Holtz products as well as alcohol inks. That does exclude, um, it does exclude the Tim Holtz oxides and ink pads, but, and refill like inkers, um, and I, whoops, uh, and it, so it does exclude those, but there is a whole massive range of embellishments available. Uh, if you have already placed an order with me yesterday and gone, oh no, I must have those Tim Holtz products, then you have paid postage yesterday and today we will give you the postage special of no judgment, which means that you can add to your postage. Um, you can add to your order with no judgment. Uh, we will collate them, put all your orders together, and then post them out to you on Monday. Um, so then this way, after you pay postage just that one time, we will, uh, we will then post it together. all together. Uh, a couple of other things that you'll find on the website are a... Oh, let's put a clip on there. A um, couple of things you'll find on the website. The pre-love section has been discounted as well. You will also find the... Oh, I like that. Um, the pre-love section, you'll also find the... What was the other one? 30% off. 30% off. I have discounted a whole heap of papers 30% off, and you will still find a great selection there as well. Uh, limited stocks available of those. Um, so yes, that is easy to find. So I've just popped that little hinged clip onto here and tying a little bit of string on and we are done. So I'm kind of loving that. That's working quite nicely, not too complicated, super effective. So you could do that on a card front. You could do that as a gift tag. You could make that as an art journal page. Um, you can do these techniques on a scrapbook page. So what I'm going to do now quickly is just go over what we, the steps that I have done to create this uh, for those of you just tuning in. I cut myself a piece of cardboard um, about the size of the tag from a cardboard box, then used the paper stash, 36 papers, the 8x8 collage and went through and covered with gel medium my tag. 
I then inked around the edges using a combination of a couple of different colours of Distress Oxides. And actually, it needs a bit of black around the edge. That's what I'll do. Um, so, Oxide. Uh, then I will... Oh, that's better. We did a little stamping with the foam stamps. So, the Tim Holtz foam stamps, cling stamps, pop those on just to add a little bit of interest in the background with some stenciling as well. Uh, use the papers to create some ephemera and used the new Sizzix, dun, 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 dun. the new Sizzix, where are they? Here we go, what are they called? Wildflower stems. We use the wildflower stems, um, which I inked over the top here. All right, so super easy. Uh, the Tim Holtz Dead People uh, paper dolls. I popped this guy on here and added a bit of uh, Distress Oxide over the top and then added some jump rings, coloured the wood ruler, popped that on. And I'm just adding now just a little shiny to the project over the top of these flowers. Um, so there's plenty of really cool techniques and I will be uploading this onto YouTube uh, within the next week. So you'll be able to go back and watch it up there or you'll be able to find it on my Facebook page. Um, it'll stay on this page where you can watch it. So thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. If you can jump onto nataliemay.com.au, have a look in the daily deals section, you will find all of these items and they are, will be automatically discounted at the checkout, 15% off. Um, everything that you that I've used here today uh, is online. Uh, the only thing on my desk that isn't available online is probably just my glue holder here, but you can find those. Oh, shoe fly. Um, you can find those anywhere online. Other than that, um, have a fantastic day. I will be back here again at 1.30 and I'm going to be creating an art journal page in my, uh, creating a page in my art journal and I'm going to be using the new, new Tim Holtz butterfly die and some Lindy's Gang Magical. So I'm going to go from vintage to bright very, very quickly. So well, as per normal, I will add a photograph of this and link all the products that I have used in the next half an hour. Um, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I look forward to chatting to you all soon. Bye.